Good morning, everyone. Happy fourth Sunday of Advent. How are we here already? <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful season, though, Advent is, a season of light and, and hope and expectation. And today, that is the theme uh, for the, the, the passage that I'll be reading from the lectionary is Luke chapter 1, the Annunciation, when Gabriel comes, the angel Gabriel comes and shares with Mary the news that she will bear the Savior, the Messiah. And then we'll also be reading uh, the Magnificat, Mary's jubilation, her song of, of joy and of not just joy, but of, of um, prophetic expectation for God's salvation. And we'll be singing, I'll be, I'll be reading these words, sharing some thoughts, and then uh, singing a version of Mary Did You Know that um, adapts the words from the more uh, traditional song, but um, I think just a, a gorgeous capturing of Mary's Magnificat. So uh, at the end, we'll, I'll share that with you. But first, the passage in Luke chapter 1. Uh, we'll start in verse 26. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words. I, I always love that. You know, you who are highly favored, greetings. And she's like, Oh no, what is this going to be? Because <laughs> usually, I think throughout the, the, the scriptures, whenever God comes to us and calls us into something, there is travail and struggle and terror in participating in God's mission. And yet there is such favor and joy in it as well. Mary was highly favored, but she had, she had a proper respect for what that favor was going to call of her. So Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this would be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Don't be afraid, Mary. Whatever I've called you to, whatever he's called you to, he's going to get you through, too. You have found favor with God. You will be with child, and you will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. All of these words signaling to uh, Jewish ears the Messiah. Messiah, Messiah, Messiah. One like David, the promised one, the salvation that was promised. How will this be? Mary asked the angel. Uh, I'm a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. The words that have captured me in this reading of this text that I am so familiar with, and as all who are so familiar, really, with the, the Christian narrative. The phrase, she who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month. I, I think there's lots of times when we look over a situation and we think it's barren. And everyone looks at a situation and thinks it's barren. There ain't no life coming from that thing. The one who was said to be barren. It was agreed upon. Everybody knew it. Elizabeth wasn't going to have kids. 
And yet, here she is in her sixth month. So when Mary asks the angel, like, how can this be? How do I know it's real? He says, go check out your cousin. Go spend a little time with Elizabeth because there is nothing that is impossible with God. Some of you who know me personally or know our church personally, people in our church personally know that our church has been going through a trial, a struggle. Uh, and as a result of that struggle, this sanctuary that I'm in, that I love, that has been home, it's not going to be ours very much longer. Um, very soon, on the 31st of December, we will no longer be using the space. And that feels pretty barren to me and to my congregation. Not that a building ever has been able to, to hold the presence of the glory of God. Hardly. His, his glory is written throughout creation. And his spirit hovers over the earth. And his spirit dwells inside of us. And his glory dwells inside of us. Never can his glory be held within things made by human hands. And yet there's history. Yet there's a lot of love. And a lot of good work that has been done here. And it's been my job and my husband's job to completely empty this place of 80 some odd years worth of stuff. <laughs> and some of it I've been actually for a lot of years eager to get rid of. <laughs> but uh, I had uh, envisioned that happening maybe under different, different circumstances. And it's been an emptying, a process of becoming, actually becoming barren. And as hard as that is, and as many tears that have been involved in the process, we need it. I think all of us need it. This may be more of a, a Lent message than an Advent message, but I think it's true. We all have to know what it is to, to go through periods of barrenness. Liminal space. Desert time. Where the darkness seems all-encompassing. Where we and everyone else around us kind of thinks that no life is ever going to come again. That's exactly where God steps in. And he says, You'll be with child. That's exactly when God steps in and says, there is nothing that is impossible with me. There, that is exactly when God steps in and says, yeah, well, people said you were barren. People said that there was no life, but I'm here to tell you another message. That's what happened in the story of the Annunciation. Life came where everyone thought death was the story, but that wasn't actually the story. What's your story of barrenness? Where do you need the angel Gabriel to come and mess your world up a little? <laughs> to tell you that the thing that you thought was dead will be alive. The thing that you thought was impossible yet can be. Embrace for a moment the period of barrenness, but don't embrace the barrenness. Be ready to receive the life and all the newness that is to come. And when Mary embraced, may it be unto me as you have said. Not only changed her life, man, it changed the course of history. And Mary's song, as a result, she goes to see Elizabeth and, and she's like, boom, it's true. Like <laughs> She sees her cousin pregnant, bearing child. And she bursts into song, not just, not just a song uh, that she made up on the spot, but a song, the, the people's song. Themes that have been written about in the prophets for, for, from the, since the ancient of days for her. She was singing the song of her people, the, the ancient hopes that she knew she was going to see that the long night of barrenness was done. That which she had hoped for, that which her people had hoped for, was going to 
spare life in that moment and she was gonna touch it <laughs> she says my soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant not just her but her people the humble state of his people his servant from now on all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me the mighty one has done great things for me holy is his name his mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation he has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. Everybody who thinks they're on top, he is scattering them. The ones who are proud and full of themselves and don't know what it is to, to, to humble themselves before the great and almighty God, they are being scattered. He has brought down rulers from their thrones and he has lifted up the humble. Our God is a God of the humble. His salvation is one of humility. His salvation is one of sacrifice. And those who know how to humble themselves and sacrifice and be merciful and be like him will taste his salvation. And those who like to flip the script in the name of Jesus and especially who like to flip that script and be on top and push and press and prod and get their way those ones will find themselves on the bottom these words weren't just spoken uh, as like oh yeah they're gonna get rid of all the Gentiles all the evil Romans man God had to do a work to to level the playing field in Israel in Judea with his own people throughout the prophetic history God was usually speaking to the corrupt rulers of his own people, the religious ones, the ones who were speaking as prophets, the ones, false prophets, the ones who were speaking in their role as priests, the ones who were leading the country as kings. They were corrupt and they were killing their own and they were greedy and power hungry. And God said, enough. I'll send you all into exile to make sure that doesn't happen anymore. Get it together. He doesn't deal with pride. Our God never blesses pride. He blesses humility, lowliness. Where are our hearts today? That's why the season of barrenness is a blessing. Because when you're in the season of barrenness, you can't lift your head high. There's just not even a, a way to be proud. So when you're in the season of barrenness, recognize God is making, is allowing you to be humble so that you can be filled. He's allowing everything to be stripped away so that he can rebuild something new for you. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, praise God, but has lifted up the, hum the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. Merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as he said to our fathers. He's not forgotten his promises. He's been merciful. She says, I know this. I know the history of my people. And right now, what I'm going to bear what the angel has promised to me, what God has promised to me, is not just a promise to me, but it's a promise to my people. The ancient promise fulfilled. And an ancient promise fulfilled for the whole world over. But it is a promise not of domination, but a promise of filling, of having enough, of sharing with those in need, speaking truthfully, rightly, honestly, justly, without any manipulation, that the Spirit would fill all places and all people with His glory that comes through humility, 
speaks life into the barrenness. Have hope today, this fourth Sunday of Advent. Christmas is nigh. The promise is almost in your hands. The ancient promise is ours, all of ours, because our God is so merciful and generous and gracious. His spirit hovers over creation and he hovers over us. Turn your ear to him today, receive his healing, healing and receive his filling. You are barren no more. Take that word today and, and live it. Rejoice. The words that I'm uh, singing today in, in the song, Mary, Did You Know? I call it the Magnificat version. Uh, the words as well as credit to the author will be in the, the lyrics uh, or in the description of this video. But Mary, did you know that your ancient words would still leap off our pages? That your spirit song would echo through the ages? That your holy cry would be subversive word? That tyrants would be trembling when they know your truth is heard? May all the tyrants, both physical and spiritual, tremble today at these words, that the one who was thought to be barren that the one who couldn't bear Mary, filled with life, that could not be contained in either of those women, but have burst into life for all. Receive that life today, friends, and receive my love. Bye-bye.